All right, let's take a look at the example questions for creating congruent statements. Our first example, A, asks us to write a congruent statement for the two triangles below. Now remember, a congruent statement specifically tells us two triangles are congruent, but also tells us the order in which the angles appear in those triangles so that the angles are corresponding. That means that in order to write this congruent statement, we need to figure out what that order is, what that corresponding order is, so that we can write it the same for both triangles. Now if we take a look, angle F here, the one that's marked with a single sort of an angle delineator here, is the one that's corresponding to angle R up here on the other triangle. In fact, let me get orange because it'll be a little easier to see on that black. There we go. This one over here is corresponding to this one here. And then we can also see that the two hash angle, E, is the one that corresponds to the two hash angle, S. So if we were to line those up, we'd have to take the right-hand triangle, this one over here, and invert it, flip it over this way, so that this side was down over here. We have to flip this triangle over along the FE side. Once we did that, we'd see that D and T corresponded to each other, F and R corresponded to each other, and S and E corresponded to each other. That means that we can write our congruent statement as triangle FDE is congruent to triangle RTS. Now, of course, there's a number of different ways we could do that. Once we have these sides uh, sort of set, or these angles set up so that they're corresponding, we can do it in any order we want it. We could also say that triangle SRT corresponds to EFD as well. But for one example, triangle FDE is uh, congruent to triangle RTS is a perfectly reasonable uh, answer. So let's take a look at example B. This one tells us that we need to find out, we know that triangle CAT, triangle cat, is congruent to triangle dog, and it wants to know what else we know if we're told that information. Well, like we kind of discussed on the last example here, we know that the order that the angles are described in our triangle statements here is important. We know that this, because of the, the order they're written in, that C, angle C, corresponds to angle D, and that angle A, oops, tried to change colors and brought it with me, angle A corresponds to angle O, and that angle T corresponds to angle G. So we know all the angles and which ones correspond where. We also know which sides correspond. We can see that side CA, which is marked right here in purple, corresponds to side DO, which is marked over on the other side. Yeah, And we can see that side AT corresponds to side OG, and that side CT corresponds to side DG. So we actually have a lot of information just from this one little statement that cat corresponds or cat is congruent to dog. All right, let's take a look at example C. Example C says, if bug is congruent to ant, what angle is congruent to n? Well, again, as we were discussing with the last couple of uh, examples, the order that the angles appear is important. So since u is the second angle in the list of the first triangle descriptor, and n is the second angle in the list of the second triangle descriptor, that tells us that angle N is congruent to angle U. And there we go.